young, gifted, and black. That's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely. So first of all, um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So um, first of all, I think that's an excellent way to be able to uh, start today, um, because that's really why we're here, right? It's about figuring out, you know, what we can be able to do with some of the skills and some of the experiences that we've had to be able to give back to others. Um, first, let me start off by saying thank you to uh, Michael to starting us off with those words, um, but also to uh, Ms. Evangeline Mitchell for all the work. I mean, it's amazing to hear this is the 15th year of doing this, and I heard over 1,400 individuals who are here today. So that's, uh, that's just amazing to hear. So first of all, let's give everyone here a round of applause. So my name is Jason Clark. I'm president of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, which is the largest association of predominantly African-American attorneys here in New York. Uh, at the MBBA, what we try to do is help with the professional development of our members. So if folks are interested in becoming a judge one day, if someone is interested in becoming um, a partner at a law firm or a general counsel or opening up their own shingle, we try to help them in those ways. Another way is that we also try to do is make sure that we're advocating for diversity and inclusion in our profession. That's why it's so wonderful to see so many people here who are going to be in the pipeline and becoming attorneys in the future. And then finally, what we try to do is make sure that we're fighting against different inequities in the justice system. So I mentioned all that to say that you should also definitely become an MBBA member. Uh, I think it's only fit, it actually is only $15 if you're a law student or what have you. Um, but especially those who are in New York, there are a lot of opportunities that will be uh, coming out uh, in the future and coming out now. So again, it's, it's amazing to see so many beautiful black and brown faces here today. Uh, you know, so often what I hear when we're talking about trying to include the uh, in, increased diversity and inclusion in our profession, people say, well, we'd love to have more people who are black or Latinx at our law firm or at our business, but we just can't find enough, quote unquote, qualified candidates. And that's something that you may have heard at this point, maybe when you're thinking about where you're going to law school or where you're um, trying to get into your best, um, to whatever college that you went to. It's something that you will continue to hear as we move forward in your career. But the fact of the matter is, each one of the individuals here have the skills to be able to do well. And I think back when you, got, when you do start going to law school, I mean, I think back to when I was in law school, how for me, I went to the University of Michigan, go blue. And uh, when I was at uh, Michigan, it was the year of the Grutter Bollinger case, uh, when they were starting to look at affirmative action again. And I just remember myself feeling, even though I felt like I came from a, uh, got a great education at, um, um, in college and beforehand, you know, a lot of self-doubt about whether or not I can do this. You know, am I an imposter, you know, being at this, uh, this law school? And the fact of the matter is when each one of you go to law school, you're going to feel that way one way or another at some point whether it's because uh, you know, you're having challenges in contracts or whether it's because you, know, you hate evidence or what have you. But the main thing I'd want to make sure that everyone here knows is that each one of you have the ability to be able to do well. And everyone who was ever able to achieve something had that same self-doubt and was over to overcome it. I know that um, when we just think back, I mean, we had just lost a, uh, a pillar of the civil rights uh, community just a couple of weeks ago, uh, United States Congressman Elijah Cummings. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is before he was a civil rights advocate, um, you know, as a congressman, he was a lawyer. And before he was a lawyer, he struggled with his own education. He struggled in special education classes, but he overcame those struggles to uh, graduate Phi Beta Kappa uh, from college and then go on to the University of Maryland School of Law and then, of course, become the civil rights advocate that we all know he is today. Likewise, when we think of Thurgood Marshall, Thurgood Marshall is someone who uh, applied to the University of Maryland School of Law and was rejected from that school. But then he didn't let that stop them. He used it as momentum to move forward and go on to um, Howard Law, to go on to join the NAACP, to start the Legal Defense and Educational Fund, Brown versus Board of Education, and what have you. So the main thing I would just ask everyone here who's at this uh, terrific conference is make sure you think back to you know, what made you, how you got to this point, 
And when you start to think about whether or not you can do it, because we're all going to be there, think back to those who have come before you. Think back to the opportunities that you've overcome in the past. And remember that you have the ability to be the next generation. Because when we think about voting rights, when we think about all the issues that we're going to have to be dealing with, it's going, the people who are going to be fighting for those issues are going to be each one of you. And we need you. Thank you.